Okay, good, good, af good afternoon. This is okay. Sorry, hold on. I'm having difficulty with my computer. <laughs> Bear with me. All right, there we go. So this is it is Monday, May fourth. It is now three forty. We have a quorum for the OPEB Trust Committee meeting. I'm actually just going to share a screen so I can bring the items up. Assuming I can share the screen. This way I can work off of one. So let me know if I need to change this. And this is not going to work. I see it, Gary. Problem is the way it's on my screen, I can't control it. There we go. You're, okay. in your, you're in your browser. Can you see the agenda though? You can. Okay. So uh, call the meeting to order. We do have a quorum. So let's go item B, consideration of minutes of the November 4th committee meeting. Take a motion on the minutes. Motion to approve. Sorry, who was that? Uh, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Need a second? I can second that. Suppose I can too. Okay, any discussion on the minutes? Nope. Seeing none, take a motion to approve. Aye. Aye. Motion approved, motion carries. Uh, item C, report of investment management consultant. We have Chris on the line. Chris, I hope you're healthy, I'm doing well. I'm sure our portfolio is not, but I'll let you tell the tale on that and I can scroll through here if it's helpful for anyone. Yep. If you just and want I to tell can, me what. Sure, I can, uh, I'll Gary give uh, uh, page references along the way here. Well, likewise to, to all the attendees this afternoon, most importantly, I trust everyone is is well and safe and I think is that the town manager alluded to uh, first quarter was some pretty tough sledding although as we'll see uh, April's been uh, been somewhat kinder in the markets um, so if you're able to scroll through our deck um, uh, bear with me here I'm trying to do it at the same time if you just go to page four page three excuse me Gary I'm bouncing around here on mine um, just briefly for uh, just as a reminder to the to the members the call that we did um, uh, enter in March we'd announced this back in January our combination with a peer firm out in Chicago DeMeo Schneider and Associates um, that transaction did close on schedule on the 31st of March um, and we have had lots of integration uh, uh, calls with our new counterparts in Chicago. As a reminder for this group, they think and act the way we do. Uh, very transparent investment solution. The interests of the clients come first. And I won't read through all this individually, but certainly it was motivated in, in having uh, adequate scale to compete effectively on your behalf with managers and in markets. Um, we doubled our research staff, we've added operational infrastructure, um, and we will very thoughtfully over time, the course of the next year, year and a half, bring together the best aspects of each of the organizations and do so in a manner that just, uh, uh, minimizes your, uh, any disruption that you may encounter, certainly. Um, I'll still continue to be your lead consultant. The, the service team in Windsor is identical, absolutely nothing changes. Uh, and won't change, um, you know, in any uh, in any form or fashion. So, kind of more of the same on that front. But I did want to give you that update. Um, if you could, uh, uh, Gary, if you scroll ahead to page, um, bear with me here to page five. Um, I think, as everyone knows, it's interesting. Back in the middle of March, Mike and I were talking a little bit. Uh, uh, just as the markets really encountered their most difficult uh, uh, times. And uh, it typically takes somewhere north of three months for a bear market to ensue historically. And that's, you'll remember, definitionally 
uh, a, a drawdown from from a 20 percent uh, from the from the highs of 20 percent. So it's a, usually a fairly gradual process. In the month of March, it took 16 trading days. So it was by any measure the most volatile month in history, um, and it was you know certainly an all hands on deck scenario there. I think we can all agree, as you see on this page, um, you know the magnitude of the downdraft are shown in the upper right hand corner of the page. Uh, but what's going on alongside this and what's engendered some of this stability we've seen in the markets in April, as you all well know, uh, is the magnitude of response uh, from uh, governmental authorities. The CARES Act most prominently, and, and I think folks know generally how that works and what its intentions are. Uh, the work that the central bank is doing, the Fed is doing, introducing liquidity into the system has been unprecedented. Um, not enough for us to not enter a recession. I think it's a foregone conclusion that we are in and will be in a recession for a period of time. But certainly the markets are looking forward several months out that maybe we begin to stabilize and start to emerge from that slowdown uh, in the back half of the year. Um, so certainly on, on again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because I know you're all well familiar with it, but certainly really unprecedented times in the markets. And if you scroll ahead to page six, you, you see some of the numbers for the quarter. And as you can well tell there, um, really no place to hide in the markets in the first quarter. Uh, certain segments of the fixed income markets uh, uh, did okay. Uh, particularly that uh, treasury bonds and government bonds, but you see it was a uh, it was a bloodbath in the equity arena, uh, really domestic, large cap, small cap, international emerging market. As you can see there, there really weren't weren't places to hide. So just a very difficult operating environment. Um, and I think with that, uh, in the interest of time, if no one objects, because a lot of the collateral listed in here is things that you probably already have a good awareness of. The one thing I might do before at the portfolio in just a second, if you scroll all the way ahead to page um, 10, uh, uh, you know, I know you've all seen this type of collateral before, right? We, we do have bear markets. Uh, um, and, and, and you know what we're trying to exhibit on this page, I think, as you all well know, is that the importance of staying invested and staying staying true to your strategic targets is is really um, remains an important rule and an edict for all of us. And and, and you can see the benefits of that over time. Uh, you don't have to miss very many days in the markets. Um, to really start to deteriorate your longer term return. Uh, and those good days can happen even in difficult environments. Look at the bottom of that same page there. We uh, really hit kind of the heaviness of the crisis right in the mid March, two thirds of the way through March time frame, and yet look towards the back half of March in the exhibit there in the bottom of the page 10. There were some pretty big updates. In fact, two of the biggest updates in history occurred in the, in the middle of all that uh, chaos. So staying invested obviously is critical. I know this group has always been so thoughtful that way. Um, you know, I may remind you again. Uh, just one last parting shot before we look at the portfolio on page 12. You'll see there, um, uh, if you can make it out way over on the left there, uh, look at the, the downdraft. We talked about the peak, the trough decline there and how sharp it was. Uh, and you can see the, the line, green line, if you will. Um, on page 12, Chris, Chris sorry. Should yeah, I go to page 12? Yeah, okay. page, sorry, yeah, page 12 just has a couple of graphics on it. You see on the top half of the page, it's just showing previous downdrafts in the markets and, and look at the duration and the amount of time they typically take versus what happened uh, in February and March over in the left-hand side of the exhibit. You can see the uh, the green line there indicative of the, uh, the re-rating of risk assets that we had in the month and how sharp and, and truncated it was. Um, and then uh, again, a final, we'll, we'll see how this all bears out. Again, as mentioned, April's been much better in the markets. I think as you all know, you know, markets do recover. Being patient is a great virtue to have, as we all know. Um, we, we just list here a couple previous times where we've had pretty significant 
down drafts and equities. Uh, and then there's the magnitude of the subsequent recovery. We don't show it on the page here, but in the month of April, the S&P was up almost 13%. Small cap stocks were up close to 14%. International stocks are up, you know, seven and a half, eight percent Bonds are up a touch. Um, so things have stabilized a good deal. Uh, so we'll see where that all where that all ultimately plays out. If you jump ahead and scroll to page fourteen, actually, can I back? Can I ask a question? Oh, absolutely, please. So back on here, where you've circled the, um, where you have a line with a circle what, that says twelve months after a bear market low, it goes it jumped up fifty seven percent. Yeah. So that's the, that's the recovery, Gary, from that new low, right, over the course of the next one year period. So you do see there, right, um, to the extent that you can kind of stay the course and, and some of that indigestion works its way through the market. Of course, each and every scenario comes with a little bit of a different economic backdrop and, and, and unique considerations. But certainly from a, a pattern perspective there, you do get an appreciation for once markets stabilize and settle down, um, you know, the recoveries can be pretty pronounced and it doesn't take all that long uh, for them to begin to materialize. Okay, thank you. The six month numbers too right next door are not, are not insignificant either. So just something that kind of gives us guideposts on being disciplined and patient. Um, but a good question. And again, on page, on page 14, is the depiction of the portfolio at the end of March, 18.2 million. Uh, just to give you a flavor, while it's not listed in the materials formally, I think as of Friday night, and maybe as of Thursday night, the portfolio was back up to $19.6 million. So it has participated in the recovery. Um, we did work with Mike in the midst of the chaos, as you may remember. Uh, to do some thoughtful rebalancing of the program back into its targets, and that has been accretive. You can imagine in mid-March, the portfolio was more materially overweight fixed income versus equity, um, and it had gotten fairly pronounced, and we would, uh, drew down about half of that overweight from fixed income and redeployed it back into equities. And again, uh, that has certainly proven to be um, uh, kind of a uh, an accretive move given what equities have done vis-a-vis -vis fixed income over the last several weeks. So entirely consistent with the target allocations and this that rebalancing discipline to the committees about periodically. Um, but the program otherwise, um, I think is in good working order, right? From a, from a, a manager and an allocation perspective. Um, we've been working, I think everyone knows with the town now since, oh, I want to say uh, right around that first financial crisis, maybe the 08, 09 time frame. And, you know, we've had kind of three really acute down periods. The 08, 09 period mentioned. Remember the fourth quarter of 2018 was a double digit down quarter. And we've obviously just had one in the first quarter. I think that the town has always been great about the allocation still makes sense. We think these are good managers that over time, uh, over periods of time add value uh, and we're willing to kind of grit and bear it a little bit. Um, and that's the scenario we, we're gonna encounter in Q1 here. So if you scroll ahead, just as kind of a final thought, uh, you do see it was a difficult quarter uh, for the managers in performance. So on page 15, uh, this is, uh, you know, the first time I think in quite some time where we've had a, 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 a result like this, but down about 15% in the first quarter, uh, a bit behind the benchmark. Um, some of that, uh, uh, you know, just came out of the struggles that the active managers had in the downdraft. Um, uh, and again, we're looking here uh, as we sit here this afternoon with managers that are up, you know, your fixed income managers up 3%, your small cap value managers up 10% in the month, Boston Partners is up almost 9%, your international managers are up 5 and 7.5% and respectively. So um, the managers are, as things have settled down a little bit, are participating again. Um, 
as frustrating as that first quarter number is, um, you know, I think that discipline I talked about earlier, I still think we have complete faith in the roster managers that you have in the program uh, and that the allocation, the broader allocation is correctly specified as well. So uh, happy to, I know I want to keep you on task here. So happy to take any questions from the committee. Um, kind of recognizing how difficult the, uh, the operating environment was in Q1. Um, but with that, it's, it's just kind of the quick update that we had for the, for the benefit of the group. Well, Chris, my only thing is I think I've you know, asked, asked in the past uh, with the size of the um, portfolio now, um, if there is consideration to do um, one, any precious metals, gold and gold or silver as, a, as one, a hedge for these types of markets and also because uh, of the inflationary pressures that all the uh, money uh, pouring in will do. And then the other thing is uh, any thought to more individual investments, seeing that, you know, the total market index and, and, and S and P index can't really react to the fact that, you know, they still need to own the auto dealers and the, um, airlines and everything else, they don't have the flexibility to not, uh, whereas if, if those are individual securities, the, they would. Yeah, I think, Joe, so those are both great questions. One of the things that we've been doing some work on that we were going to bring to the, the committee to the next meeting, to your point, is it is kind of interesting given the magnitude of stimulus, whether we may have some type of inflationary pressure, but admittedly a little bit further out on the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some interesting diversified real asset strategies out there that do combinations of what you mentioned, commodities, infrastructure. Um, you can even roll REITs into that and other things. And I think it might be an, an interesting vehicle to look at in this setting um, where we can get kind of a diversified exposure to real assets, commodities included, and, and protect, I think, again, some of the things that you're nervous of, as are we, on the inflationary front. So if, if no one objects, that would be a task for the next meeting. Um, and then as to your second question, which is another good one, um, you know, you're absolutely right on, um, you know, the indices are the indices, and they, 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 they invest in that sense naively. I think the, the, the one pushback I would offer up, right, is we've limited that generally in the program. It's most prominent on back on page, um, where's our exhibit here, right? If you scroll back, Gary, to page 14, you see it. I think, as you know, right, the, the, the one challenge is that uh, the large cap domestic space is really, really, really difficult for the active managers to consistently be. So I think that uh, we're okay with that baseline anchor position there because we can own that market for next to nothing uh, in terms of fees. And we're inclined to make those active bets with the kind of down cap with Eaton Vance and Boston Partners and then exclusively overseas. Um, and then a little bit in the fixed income arena as well with, with, the, with the, uh, the prudential strategy. So I think we kind of mix and match here kind of consciously to uh, be aware of what fees you're bearing, right? And not burdening it with the, the program with too much in the way of active management fee, but picking those higher leverage areas um, where we think the active management proposition is maybe a little elevated and a little bit more consistent, if that makes sense. Um, so I think they're both great questions. And again, I would uh, uh, offer that up on the second one. And then on the first one, again, if no one objects, what we might bring to the next uh, meeting is a, a couple of ideas that we're working on in the, uh, in the real asset arena. Sounds good. All right. Any other questions? Now I got to try to get back to my agenda. This is more challenging than you would think. Okay. Um, no other questions for Chris. I'll move on to item D. Other business? Any other items? Hey, Gary. Yes, sir. Um, I, had, I did not mention it to you nor anyone else, um, but Joe 
submitted his resignation to me um, effective after the end of, at the end of this meeting uh, from the committee. Um, so I just wanted to, I think that's something we should recognize. I don't think we need to take any action, um, but we should acknowledge that and Joe may want to say something. Um, you know, that was about it, it um, for, for me, just that, uh, you know, life's, life's been busy and uh, trying to simplify some things as I told Michael. So uh, I have, uh, you know, enjoyed it and I still offer any, you know, my time, my time, but the structure of the meetings and everything just makes it a little bit uh, tougher for me. Joe, how long, how long did you serve? Uh, I'm not really sure. Three years, maybe? Yeah, I was going to say three, Joe. Sounds well, I, you know, on behalf of the town, I thank you very much for your commitment to uh, volunteer on the, on the board. And, um, you know, I'm, um, I, I thank you for doing it. I understand the time commitment and obviously the time of day and everything involved and um, you need good people like yourself to come forward and um, spend what little time they have. And yeah. so, you know, I appreciate you being there. If there's any feedback offline that you'd like to give, I, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, if we can keep you in consideration for other opportunities down the road, um, I think that would be great. But completely understand, um, especially with everything going on right now and where focus needs to be. Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry to see you go. Hey, um, Joe, this is Mike Rell. Uh, I want to echo yeah. Gary's comments as well. Thank you for serving. You know, it, it takes a rare breed to uh, give back to the community and serve. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree. Time commitments are um, pulling you in a million different directions, especially right now, given everything that's going on. But uh, again, just like Gary said, on behalf of the town, thank you for serving. Uh, we've got a number of uh, open uh, vacancies. And, um, you know, if, uh, if you're ever looking to, uh, to come back in, we would be more than welcome to have you. Um, Appreciate that. I think Gary and I are going to have to have a hard, long, hard look at some of these seasons uh, and see who we can get. Um, I think everybody's, you know, kind of in the same boat. So um, we're going to be looking to, to fill, but, but uh, we do appreciate your, uh, your willingness to serve uh, the town. And we appreciate it. Great. Thank you. What are you going to do with all that free time? No. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, all right. Uh, any other business? No. None. All right, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Joe, do you want to kick us off with your last one? Sure. Yeah, might as well. Uh, motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Joe, thanks again, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So Mike, do you have to officially end recording this one and then start another or do you get to roll in? Oh, that's it, right? We you have a separate Zoom for